Welcome back to the comic book ASM artist. Today we're doing another comic book haul. And we're going to start out with a bit of Marvel stuff first from one of my shops. Uh, basically, I had to save funds for Comic Con before I could pick up things from them. So, first of all, I got um, Amazing Spider Man number 16. This is the start or the lead into rather of the hunted storyline with uh, Craven. And uh, the other day, my kid was actually asking me, he saw in a sticker book a picture of Craven and he asked me about him. So these issues couldn't have come at a more perfect time for him. He's pretty much collecting my Spider Man books. Um, given to give them to him after I read them because uh, he really likes the the video game that just came out so and then you know he's been watching homecoming a lot and things like that so it's safe to say that uh, my younger son's favorite hero is spider-man so it's fun to be able to give these to him even though it's not Glory Days McFarland stuff, it's still fun. And I have no clue where my tape is, so I'm not going to tape anything, so if you're OCD, I apologize. Next we have some ridiculous numbering with a <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man 16.HU for Hunted. Should have just been 17 and then 18 and whatever else, but no Marvel. Makes no sense. All right, so we have a gray land cover here. And uh, this issue from what I've seen pretty much centers on Black Cat mainly. So I haven't read it yet, I just saw some of the pictures. So I think it'll delve a little bit into um, Peter and her history maybe, or something of that nature. But I've really missed uh, buying Spider-Man books, so it's fun to be able to pick them back up again. Next is Amazing Spider-Man 17. Uh, for, and this is the first official part of The Hunted. Nice opening here. Ramos has worked on Spider-Man so much you can just tell he's uh, really comfortable with the character and then uh, you know the choices he makes. Definitely very stylized but interesting nonetheless. And I know in the previous parts they've been dealing with uh, the lizard's son um, wants to hang out with some other people from school and his dad won't let him. So I think he snuck out of the house in the previous couple issues ago. So I don't know if he went missing type of situation, but I know he left secretly without uh, the lizard's blessing. So, next I got the Immortal Hulk, number 14. And this book is just, you know, I, I can't emphasize how very twisted it is. And, um, I guess the, um, I want to say it's... I don't remember if it's called No Road Home or No Surrender or whatever. Whatever their 
Avengers special they're doing right now. I wasn't able to get it. It's just, you know, too many books on top of what I'm already getting. But from what I'm understanding, Hulk is pretty much uh, positioning himself to try to level the Earth with atomic warfare one way or another. So he has become a villain. So I'm sure ties into this too. Immortal Hulk number 15. appreciate that they've kept the same artist for most of the run too so that's not typically something that really happens much in the industry anymore I know they had uh, at least one other issue I remember they had like people sharing different stories and um, they had different art styles now we'll see we got part of his brain looks like it's hanging out here so that's that's pretty nasty. And I guess this is big news right here. Jonathan Hickman is coming back to write for Marvel in July. So we'll see what happens with that. I'm predicting it's another um, Shield title. That was really one that I, I believe he started back in the day. But we'll see. What was it? Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the series now. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about, though. Thor number 11. And we have the War of Realms coming. And I will be following that event. Just because I'm reading Thor and a couple others, they have a million and a half spin-offs coming out of it, but I'm not going to read all of those, but I'm at least going to read the main thing. I'm really tempted to start picking up X-Men. I hear some crazy stuff is going on with that, but presently I just can't do it. Next is the Avengers, number 16, the blade front and center there. I don't know why I always try to turn it on the first page. I know they always do their plot synopsis in the front. This looks to be pretty Ghost Rider centric right here. This 
then later on it switches gears. I turned a little bit ahead. Avengers number 17. Hmm, quite a lot of blood there. Saw the confrontation in the previous issue. I don't think, I don't know, this might be an ad for, they have a new uh, Carnage series coming, written by Donny Cates. I think it's, is it Absolute Carnage, or, I can't remember, but it's pretty much a riff on the uh, Maximum Carnage. Next we have Iron Man number nine. No, it looks like it switches art styles here. I think he's still in the virtual world, yeah, because this is his mom. In the early days, I guess she was a musician. is Fantastic Four, number seven, and we have um, Galactus is being controlled by Doctor Doom, so that'll be fun to see what happens there, or I don't know, me might lose control there, I see Doom there. there. Next, I got a Spider-Man special, Spider-Man life story. So this takes place in all the different decades. And that's the main reason I got it. Of course, I do love Spider-Man, but it'll be interesting to see how uh, this concept plays out. Some nice Mark Bagley art.
He does such a good job. And then I did have part of it got spoiled for me, but I'm not going to spoil the part that um, was a surprise in here for you all. So I would say if, if the premise interests you, pick it up. Spider-Man Through the Ages. And the art's good enough, I'd say, for sure. Next is Spider-Man City at War, and I wonder if this is going to play into the um, DLC at all, because I'm pretty sure that was the same title it had. Clayton Crane was doing the interiors though too, that'd be amazing. But I mainly got this for my kid, like I said earlier, because he likes the game so much. This looks pretty much like the opening of the game. This is one of the first things you do. So I wonder if it'll uh, fast forward a bit. I'd hate to know that it's a, a retread. But either way, like I said, it is really for my kid. And what's fun is uh, they've been seeing me draw on everything with my own comic I've made and stuff so they're actually drawing more and trying to do their own stuff too so it's nice to be able to encourage creativity so and then I'll come home and I'll see like their box of comics out and they'll be looking through them and stuff so it's pretty neat to see because they weren't like that a few years ago All right, next I can move on to stuff from my regular shop and my trusty store folio here. So first we have Justice League number 19. And I got this primarily for the Liefeld cover. Uh, I think this is the first time he's drawn Batman and Wonder uh, everyone here except for Superman because he already did a Superman cover so I have no clue of the interior story I have heard a lot of good things about Justice League but that's just um you know all those things it's one more title equals less money so but it's by Snyder Jimenez, and I'm sure it's good. We got Mr. Mixia's pit lick there. And I know they have uh, some crazy crossover thing going on right now. Uh, the issue 20 just came out, and it has like a, I think three covers that connect. And there's like alternate dimension versions of all the heroes and stuff. This Batman looks very Wolverine like though. But that's fine. Next we got Nightwing number 58. I'm 
still a little behind on this particular story. I know that uh, the Joker's daughter is the current threat. And then I think they still have all these alternate Robins, or Nightwings rather, floating around. Surprised by that cover though. Tyler Kirkham usually doesn't go. It looks really uh, more painted than typical of his work. Next I got Spawn Kills Everyone 2, issue number 4, and this is the conclusion of the miniseries. And of course this is his riff on his Spidey Venom cover he did whenever Venom came back. And yeah, this book is just super ridiculous, if you can tell. But it's fun, if nothing else. And then you get to see Spawn interact with different licensed properties. Flash there. Man. Next we got Shredder in Hell, number two, by San Luco, my favorite modern Turtles artist. And the title is pretty much the premise, Shredder is in Hell. Uh, he, I think he's trying to make his way out, would be my understanding of it, and he's, you know, taking on apparitions throughout his life and we see some very possessed versions of the turtles fighting him here <laughs> look at that yeah see they're not pulling their punches on this one here I guess since they're like corpses and stuff, they're able to be a bit more brutal with it. Next we have Damage number 15 and Aaron Lepresti the other day on his Facebook said he officially drew the last page of the series so there's still a few more left but there's not many. He did a great job. He took over, I believe it was issue maybe nine or something like that. So 
So I applaud his efforts. Definitely one of the most enjoyable. Hopefully he'll be able to move on to something else. In the post too, he was concerned about finding work afterwards. So I know he has done um, a little bit of creator own stuff. So he might pick that up again. We'll see. But he's definitely a talent, an under underappreciated talent, so hopefully he'll have something work out for him. Sixty-seven by Tom King and Lee Weeks. So I expect some crime noir feel to this book for sure. It's really what uh, Lee Weeks excels in: is making a grounded, believable, yet entertaining story conveys action very well as you can see not a lot of dialogue here but story being told regardless Looks like there's very little dialogue at all in this book, so if you're into, um, I guess, just an action-packed, well-drawn book, this will be for you. But it seems like Tom King does that, you know, he, he tends to kind of switch his styles around from, from book to book. I would imagine if you're signed on for a hundred books of a series, you want to keep it interesting or just try to challenge your skill a little bit. So it's understandable. What do we have next here? Let's say Turtles number 92. And what we have in the works in, in this series is that uh, Karai is presently coming back. And uh, I believe the last issue, she was even in front of Splinter. And they're trying to work out negotiations where she takes over the Foot Clan again. So we'll see what happens there. Um, like I said, issue number 100 is coming up, so... I expect something incredible will take place in that issue. I don't think these negotiations will drag out to that issue. You know, that's eight issues away. So, but we'll certainly see what happens. And then we have a metalhead talking with this guy here. I'm trying to remember what his name is. I think it's Agent Bishop. I could be wrong, though. I forgot. But it looks like he's trying to work with him. And he's been involved with, um... Just trying to mess with all the mutants, really. And, uh, he was... The main person responsible for the death of Slash.
as well as the um, worn Triceratons, I believe. And I think he's somehow involved with Null, too, if I remember correctly. Kind of blending it all together in my head a little bit, but I think he's been there for all those skirmishes. Next we have Superman number 9, another Rob Liefeld cover. The main reason I'm getting these is just he doesn't typically draw DC, so that's what has drawn me to it. I'm not a hardcore Liefeld fan, but uh, it's just fun to see him work with characters he hasn't before. We see Zod talking with Superman and his kin here. The nice two page spread there. Oh, yeah, he was talking about how in the past he. I'm trying to remember these guys. They're they're pretty much like all villains. I'm blanking out. <laughs> Sorry, I can't remember the names of a lot of things today. And he's in a bad spot here. He's squeezing his head. Action Comics number 1007 and I previously already got this but I just wanted this cover this is uh, Epting's first uh, current art style for Superman and this honestly is the best image I think I've seen him do in his current thing he's only done a couple issues so far but I really liked this cover a lot so I'm glad that I was able to get it. And we got the Batman Who Laughs, number three. And I don't think I have this already. But there's just so many, so many variant covers to keep up with uh, that uh, I'm not sure if I do or not. But it sounds like my neighbor's trying to maybe start mowing some grass, so... If I don't get to my half price books part of my um, haul, you'll know why. At half price, I was able to find one of my favorite runs of Captain America ever. This came out in 1990. 
called The Adventures of Captain America, Captain America, the Sentinel of Liberty, and it is done by uh, Kevin McGuire. And I have the first one too already signed, and I gave the other copy to my kids, so that's why I don't have it here. But uh, I highly recommend this if you're into Captain America, go find this. They did recently put it into a trade too. But I love his style, it's really expressive. And the coloring in here, I think they airbrushed this. I equate this to pretty much like Captain America's year one. So this is like him in a makes, makeshift costume here. Let me show you. So later on we see him full blown suit here. And Kevin McGuire was actually the first person to give him the highly detailed level on his scales. John Cassidy often gets a lot of credit for that. But uh, Kevin McGuire was the first person, person to realize it. Same too, see like the helmet and everything. So... I think Cassidy was heavily inspired by it. He's definitely also a very talented individual, but Kevin was the first, at least to my understanding. But just really enjoyable stuff. And then there is a showdown with the Red Skull in here. And see, they get put in a concentration camp. Next I found these. I was hoping to find the whole set of them. But this was the um, early Robin miniseries. I've always loved these covers by Brian Bolin. And I always, this is always an iconic one you see a lot. But I didn't even know that uh, there was a free poster in this comic. And it's not even of this image, it's a uh, Neil Adams. And I can't, I'm not going to show it all the way in there. But it's pretty much just like Robin standing on a rooftop. There you go. There's a better view of his face. I'm going to leave it in there. I really want to pull it out and look at it. That's always funny. Like, I don't... I don't remember the, the color not holding very well. In these early issues. The newsprint. Like, I look at... I guess it was maybe a year or two later where they really nailed down the coloring on this newsprint maybe because you look at around I think it's 90 I don't know maybe 92 or something like that and it doesn't seem like it the colors get this like faded and fuzzy and there's parts where like the ink just kind of all runs into each other but it's still a time capsule, and I appreciate that, you know. 
you you flip through this and you are taken back, you know, and the smell of the pages and all that. For sure. And yeah, we just get uh, more of the same. Hopefully I can find the other two parts. I know that they recently put these into like a big old trade. And I even saw those at half price too. At one point I just didn't have funds when they were in there. this Superman issue, number 12, some Bogdanov art, but yeah, see, like, this looks a little crisper, so I don't know what it was. I remember I actually wrote John Bogdane off a letter and I drew a picture of that guy telling him I really liked that character and he sent me back a postcard with his autograph on it sadly I don't have it anymore a little Encino man ad for you I got these Rocco comics, and I actually never saw these when I was a kid, but I really like Rocco's Modern Life, so that's why I picked these up. They had some old uh, Rin and Stimpy books in there too. I really like this game. I gotta find it again. I remember my mom didn't like it as soon as she realized that um, uh, the power-ups in this game are drugs that you collect. And when she saw that, then we had to return it to the rental store. This I never had, but there's an adaptation of Aladdin. And yeah, it pretty much just looks like the same style from the movie. And I found the Lion King one. Same thing, I didn't have this one either. I remember that in my newspaper they put out like a continuing strip after the Lion King about like winter solstice and I uh, clipped those out and glued them to notebook paper and then someone on the bus uh, took it from me and then I punched him in the nose gave him a bloody nose and got in trouble for that. Now this one I did have, Fievel Goes West. But what's funny is I always, I read this comic a lot, I remember carrying it around a lot when I was a kid. But I never got to see the movie, and I still really want to, I just haven't. Uh, same goes for American T Tale, which is, you know, comes before that one. And I vaguely remember having this, the Superboy number four, which was him watching an animated version of himself. And this was done by the um, one of the Batman animated comic artists at the time. So 
So this was a nice little time capsule for me too. And then I found these, which is a Superman story about spousal abuse and what Clark does when he finds out about it. And I don't ever remember coming across this. And it was an early one too, I guess. This was, you know, right when my brother was collecting. This was a little bit before Doomsday and all that. But yeah, you see it right here. Sorry. And then this is the continuing part in Superman number seventy two. Yeah, right here he hears some more of the same again. And as Clark, he busts the door down and confronts him. So, yeah, not your typical story, but I thought it was interesting and not something you typically see in a trade reprint or anything like that. But uh, that's going to do it for now. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see. And uh, as always, uh, we'll check out the bowl on Indiegogo. Digital copies, $3. Link below. You all have a super slumber. Thanks. Bye.